According to a group of former four-star generals, rising carbon emissions is the newest threat to America. Earlier this year, senior military leaders released a report entitled National Security and the Threat of Climate Change, cautioning that global warming will lead to potentially dangerous instability around the world. Admiral T. Joseph Lopez, former Commander-in-Chief of U.S. Naval Forces in Europe, states in the report that climate change can provide the conditions that will extend the war on terror. Rising ocean water levels, droughts, violent weather, ruined national economies, those are the kinds of stresses we'll see more under climate change. To understand the problem facing U.S. security and global stability, we spoke with Report Advisor General Anthony Zinni, the former Commander-in-Chief of U.S. Central Command. Obviously, if you look at climate change and you look at their impacts, uh, you then have to realize that those impacts can cause uh, national security issues or concerns. I think you've seen uh, the military responses in places like Bangladesh and, uh, several times over the last decade or so and humanitarian intervention. But, you know, I, I think you could clearly look at there. It's, it's not only going to be a matter of land loss and the other problems that emerge, uh, it's going to be problems, uh, uh, you know, such as water uh, shortages, where entire aquifers disappear. We have large uh, societies that are dependent upon uh, glacier so sources or sources that uh, and aquifers that are uh, drying up, and it doesn't take much to project forward and see when they'll reach. Uh, uh, disastrous proportions and then what happens uh, are we going to have water wars uh, having been uh, the commander of US Central Command and familiar with the Middle East and, and Africa uh, and even Central Asia there are serious water concerns in those parts of the world now and and if there was a liquid that could cause war more than oil it was certainly water in those uh, in those places well what we saw in, in the relationship to to terrorism and and i would even broaden it to uh non-state entities that 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 uh, such as drug cartels warlords organized criminal international criminal organizations terrorist groups etc uh many of these groups in order to survive need unstable societies that don't have the security forces and the level of governance uh, that can counter their impact. And, and so that's why the al-Qaeda's of the world search out the Afghanistan's or the Somalia's to operate in. And the more failed or incapable states you have or failed or incapable societies that uh, have, have been reduced to that unstable state because of environmental conditions, uh, the more likely that in that in that sort of uh, degraded situation, uh, these kinds of groups will find sanctuary. I also think when you look at some conditions, you know, for example, like the melting of the ice cap in the Arctic, uh, we now have a sea that could become a transportable sea. What are the implications of that? Uh, how do we uh, protect our interests there, promote our interests, uh, prevent it from being threatened? Uh, people will rush there, obviously, nations to um, acquire the resources, to use it as a means trans transit and just like the Atlantic or the Pacific or other major major seaways there's a security issue involved in that so those are some examples of, of how the impacts could flow over into uh, national security concerns the report released by the Center for Naval Analysis illustrates a clear trade-off between short-term economic costs to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and long-term human and military costs to stabilize an ensuing global disorder the report suggests that the U.S. should become a more constructive partner with the international community to help build and execute a plan to prevent destabilizing effects from climate change, including setting targets for long-term reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. The current White House, which defines itself by a strong national security agenda, has not adopted the General's recommendations for addressing this global threat. Just last week at the U.N. Climate Change Conference in Bali, the U.S. refused the EU proposal to lower carbon emissions by 25 to 40 percent by 2020. If we don't pay attention to it now and we don't look at mitigating uh, the, the conditions that are worsened by release of greenhouse gases, then the impacts will be more severe and then it logically follows that the, the security concerns or, or issues that will arise will be more severe. So we can help mitigate that now. It's not a matter of uh, uh, well, geez, I don't want to spend the resources now. I can worry about this later. You will spend them later, probably in, in uh, greater amounts, and, and the conditions will be much worse. 
so it's it's an investment. It's a, it, it's almost like an insurance policy on what you could do to reduce these effects now. And my advice would be to uh, any leader representing us in these international conferences on this is uh, uh, to, as a leader of the free world, to set the example uh, to look at how we can best reduce release of greenhouse gases uh, and at the same time uh, to work with the international community to bring pressure on others like China and India that are not uh, signatories to uh, Kyoto and other arrangements that uh, uh, cause them to do likewise. Uh, you know, it's a small planet. The, the effects of this will know no borders, and it's important for us to find common ground on this as best we can. Uh, if we worry about the immediate economic impact, that may be just a short-term uh, advantage, and the longer term will be much more expensive down the road, not only to our economy, but to our security interests and to the welfare of our population as, as well as others. So the basic, you know, recommendations are to be good stewards of the environment. Do what you can within the military to limit uh, the problems that may be generated from training exercises and, and equipment. Secondly, understand the problem. Use your intelligence resources and, and, and study of, of how these things can cause emerging security problems. And then third, do the planning and, and the preparation necessary uh, should these things arrive. What you do now, even if these impacts are 30 years off, I happen to believe they're not that far, uh, but even if they are that far off, why would you not want to do things to lessen the severity of it by taking actions now and adjusting to it? There are some things you can see right now. You can see the ice melting in the Arctic. You can see the Arctic becoming a transportable sea. You can see many nations rushing to the Arctic to exploit its resources out there. You can see that those things all generate security concerns and issues. Uh, so to, to put your head into the sand and, and say it's 30 years off, don't worry about it now, will allow you to be unprepared when the time comes and maybe make the situation worse because of the actions you don't take in the interim. So I don't think it's alarmist. You know, around that table were 11 very senior general officers and, and, and admirals uh, that tend not to be alarmist and, and tend to be uh, more conservative. So uh, if, if those views emerge from a group like ours, I think it should get some attention. 